Hey there, welcome back to another credit card news live stream. It's really good to have you. I hope everyone's having a great weekend so far. Danny, thank you, my guy. I appreciate that super chat. Thank you so much. So I just wanted to get started here with first story. First story, we have more than three quarters of consumers prefer digital banking. The pandemic accelerated the world's digital transformation, leaving a lasting impact on consumer preferences. Take banking, for example. The digital first, the digital first banking tracker found that 78% of American consumers said they now prefer to do their banking digitally. Breaking down, 41% uh, said they prefer to use mobile apps, and while 70, while 37% said they like using their financial institution's website. These apps include functions such as check deposit, fund transfers, uh, the ability to review uh, statements and account balances. When physical branches were shuttered, financial institutions were focused to prioritize. They were forced to prioritize digital banking functionality and seek new ways to offer traditional in-person services. So as you know, um, you know, my primary bank is a digital bank. It's SoFi. And I've been with them for about two years. And, you know, I haven't seen the inside of a bank for uh the better part of a decade really even before that i had the simple bank which uh shut down but you know it's it's really good to uh, to give these new fintech banks a chance because they they're offering better rates they're offering you know uh more competitive uh, financial products and you can see you're getting like uh, you're getting features like getting paid two days early a lot of them have and they're just trying to they're racing to to you know acquire new customers and they're really offering some some really good stuff uh, like for another example with sofi with the credit card it's a two percent cashback card with no um foreign transaction fees and it's you're getting automated uh cashback redemption and that combination of features you you won't see anywhere else on the market and they're able to offer some of those features because they're a, you know they don't have any brick and mortar banks so they're saving money that way so uh, you know i'm really uh i'm really enthused about um these you know these they call them neo banks and um you know you there's several that popped up you know, chime is another one and so it's really looking good and i think millennials uh, the the stats bear that out that millennials really love the uh using these new digital uh, banking products. Let's move on to the next story here. Your credit card debt is about to get a lot more expensive. After consumers paid off a record 83 billion in credit card debt during the pandemic, credit card balances are creeping back up amid higher prices for gas, groceries, and housing. Overall, credit card balances rose by 52 billion in the fourth quarter of 2021, notching the largest quarterly increase in the 20, I'm sorry, the 22 year history of the data now total card debt is on track to surpass pre-pandemic levels and hit an all-time record as soon as this summer at the same time the federal reserve has committed to raising interest rates to tame inflation which is now running at the its fastest pace in more than 40 years since most credit cards have variable rates there's a direct connection to the fed's benchmark as the federal funds rate rises the prime rate does as well and credit card rates follow suit cardholders see the impact within a billing cycle or two so i didn't actually know this before but the once the fed raises those rates we're gonna see the impact on those uh, variable interest rates those variable aprs on our credit cards um essentially immediately and um that would be concerning for everyone else and we're going to get into um you know why you shouldn't worry about it because most of my audience i'm sure is not carrying debt so any sort of change in the interest rate is not going to affect what you're doing and what i'm doing because we're paying that statement balance by the due date or even a lot of you are paying it by the billing cycle date and so that's we're, it's not going to affect us but you might want to warn your friends and family that carry a lot of debt and i actually asked you guys in a poll a few months back and you told me that around uh, around 60 percent of you guys told me that um you don't have any family or friends that are into credit cards and you know into 
you know, earning rewards into using them the right way to not pay any interest or fees or, you know, most, I don't like annual fees, but um, it's, it's something that they should know about because it's going to cost them more in the long run when those rates go up and they're, they'll inevitably have to pay a larger amount in interest. So you might want to, you know, try to get them on board, get them, you know, get them inside a, on this movement, on this wave. Oh, Kamar, what's up, man? Kamar J, you're saying you noticed the change in interest rate on your uh, Chase Sapphire Preferred. Really? All right. What did it go up to? Biggs, support group. How you doing, buddy? Welcome to the live streams. Good to see you. All right, so yeah, so you want to warn your friends and family. Um, and that's all we had to say there. Next story. We have uh, credit card companies adjust merchant fees. Consumers may pay the price. And so let me enlarge this a little bit. Um, processing fees or swipe fees. Um, on credit cards are likely rising for millions of businesses. Visa, MasterCard, uh, the top two payment networks in the U.S. with more than 70% of the market, recently changed its fee structure for merchants who accept their credit cards for payments. The company said some of the changes delayed from last year due to the pandemic include both increases and decreases and are meant to continue supporting small businesses and safe and convenient shopping for consumers. However, retail trade groups and bipartisan group of lawmakers say the moves on the whole will force businesses to pass on added costs to consumers. Although some companies will see fee increases, MasterCard notes it's lowering costs for all merchants with transactions below $5, and Visa says it's cutting its rates by 10% for more than 90% of small businesses, which could mean those with $250,000 or less in credit card volume. Um, both say these types of changes are going to help make small businesses more competitive against big box retailers and benefit local shoppers. So, you know, <laughs> here's the thing. If the if they're going to raise the fees on the big box retailers, that's where most of us shop. So they're going to pass that price on to the consumer. So we're going to lose out on here, too. So the the interest rate for the regular person who who is paying interest on their credit card that's going up so their monthly bill is going to go up in addition to that they're going to be paying more for the goods and services at these large uh, merchants so it's not it's looking kind of grim out there um you know i think the the only the only side that wins out here is the small retailers that mom and pop shop you know that maybe that small uh franchise on the corner all right, so if you have an Apple card here, there's a couple of new stories that you might you might be excited about. Apple Cash virtual debit cards may be switching from Discover to Visa. The Apple Cash virtual debit card appears to be uh, switching networks, um, as revealed in some updated images on Apple's website. Since its launch, Apple Cash, originally known as Apple Pay Cash, has been operated through a partnership with Green Dot Bank on the Discover network. Um, Discover is one of the smaller card networks and accepted in fewer places than the heavyweights Visa and MasterCard. Over the past few years, several Apple Cash virtual card images on Apple's website have been swapped out for new ones displaying a Visa debit logo and the transition to more widely accepted network appears to be underway. So uh, a big thing that I've noticed was uh, it's gonna be accepted at Costco now. So you, Costco actually accepts Apple Pay, uh, I think from the start, but the payment method that you have set up with Apple Pay had to be a Visa card. It had to have a Visa logo on it. So it uses the Visa um, payment network. And so um, now you're going to have the ability to, to use your Apple Cash there. So it makes it a little easier on you. And we have another Apple Card addition. The um, Apple credit card is adding Ace Hardware to its 3% category list. So now, right now, you're going to have um, Panera Bread, ExxonMobil, Walgreens, Dwayne Reed. Those are like um, 
you know, I think Walgreens bought Dwayne Reed. Dwayne Reed's like um, a pharmacy in the Northeast area. I have him in my um, my neck of the woods. You got Uber, Uber Eats, T-Mobile uh, store purchases. So I, oh, I, I just noticed that they, this is just T-Mobile in-store purchases. Is that what that's saying? And you got Nike and Apple, but um, Ace Hardware, that's, that's okay. Um, we've been waiting for a lot of updates just like with some other cards like the SoFi card um we've been waiting some years this launched back in 2019 and it hasn't it's basically been unchanged as far as the three percent category since 2019 well, we're three years in you know we need some good updates you want to get that you know your card holders energized you want to get some more market share um because you're still a relatively small uh credit card um so i think it's a little disappointing and um what they could have done is either raise that earnings rate from like three percent to four or five percent or they could have added a lot more merchants maybe they could have come out with a brand new wave a full wave doubled or tripled the amount of uh merchants that you earn three percent cash back at Next up, we have Venmo and PayPal fees are on the rise yet again. PayPal has announced plans to change the fees re related to its instant transfer offerings for U.S. consumers and merchants on PayPal and Venmo. Personal accounts on the PayPal and consumer and business profiles on Venmo will pay 1.75% of the transfer amount with a minimum fee of $0.25 cents and a maximum fee of $25. PayPal merchant, fees, uh, merchant accounts will retain the existing rate of 1.5% of the transfer amount um the change they change the minimum fee to 50 cents and remove the existing 15 dollars cap for a non a no maximum fee cap structure the announced changes will take effect for venmo customers may 23rd and for paypal customers june 17th and so um i don't know about you but i always wait for that i never choose to transfer the funds instantly just on principle i just can't I can't find it in myself no matter how small the amount i need to know that was a free transfer i feel like it should have been free in the first place i just don't want to i feel like i'm getting price gouged i feel like i'm it's i'm being charged for a service that is it's a forced you know service you, you're kind of breaking your system a little bit so that you can charge somebody for that convenience it's already you could easily do it for free so I, I never choose instant. You, let me know in the comment section if you choose the instant trans, instant transmission. Um, and I remember back in the day when Google Pay used to be free. I I would I would tell you know, anybody who would listen that I could just use Google Pay. Come on board with Google Pay with me. I'll give you the money. You you have it in your account in seconds, and it's free. But that's no longer the case. They I don't, they took a step backwards. You know, um, I, I believe in the last year and a half. And so now it, it, the payment structure, um, it works just like Venmo and PayPal. All right, so I wanted to open this discussion to you guys. Um, I saw and I was really interested in it and I feel like this isn't talked about enough. Um, and it's something that I've, I'm always kind of on the forefront. It's in the, it's in the channel banner. It's in my name, Cal Barton Cashback. Focused on cashback. I know a, a, a few of you are, um, and I don't, I don't have any cards that are on points and, uh, except for one. And we'll talk about that, but he, he, this guy made some good points in this discussion here. And the topic is our points, a racket. And if you don't know, a racket is basically like a scheme, a scam, something that, you know, it's it's trying, you know, you're, they're trying to get over on their customers by offering points. And so this guy says he's honestly confused. I have a Chase Sapphire Reserve and I've built up like 300,000 points or something over the last few years. When I go into the app, it says I have somewhere around 3,000 in airfare credit. And now that COVID less concerning, um, he just had it last week. I figure, hey, it's finally time to use my points to book a big summer vacay. I don't talk like that. I had to leave it in there. What kind of man says vacay? Anyway, I find a one-way flight to London from Charleston and a one-way back from Madrid, that's Spain. 
Both flights are around $650 each. Not too bad, right? But hey, I'll just use my points. So he's gonna use his points. And he continues. I will call Chase Rewards and tell them my flights I like, and then I hear, sure, we can book these. They cost about $1,300 each way. And you'll use nearly all your points you've accrued over the past three years. I say, what? I'm literally looking, I'm literally looking at the prices on the flight's websites, and they have, there are half if I book myself with a card and not with points. I'm told that they only see the prices that they get directly from the airlines and there is no other price. So screw that. Despite Chase saying I'm getting 2X value for travel redemption, it's actually not nearly that much. It would be the same value as just cashing in, in the points for money instead. I just booked the flights on my own instead for half the price versus using points so i'm gonna know i know a lot of you guys you know i the chase trifecta i know is the big one and then slightly slightly secondary is the amex trifecta um i think the the most i guess the most popular cards are going to be the chase sapphire preferred and then the amex gold those are seen as kind of the i think they're both uh, 99 dollars somewhere about that and they get you the best bang for your buck, best value. I I find it interesting that this was a very, you know, kind of lively discussion and kind of questioning that that value proposition. So this guy says, "My time itself is valuable, and spending it tracking down max value on this stuff doesn't pencil out." So he's saying it just doesn't make sense to for him in this situation to apply more time on you know doing calculations and trying to figure out where is he going to get the best you know uh transfer rate what, what what what's the best partner who has it doesn't make sense for him he also says points just sit there and don't earn anything and he says, in debt, indeed, with today's inflation, they lose value over time, which is a fair point. I mean, what could you do, you know, with your money um, in the amount of time it's just sitting basically in your account? Like you wouldn't leave too much money in your savings account. You would transfer that money into a vehicle that's going to earn you more money, some sort of investment that's going to earn you, you know, hopefully close to 10 percent. Um, so it doesn't make sense on that level either. I know I know a lot of people It's very uh, popular to kind of nest egg your rewards and just kind of uh just save them and save them for years on end for that big vac vacation um and but those points aren't earning you any interest they're not earning you any you know uh, any sort of rewards there just sitting there and he says the fact that it's cash back changes my mindset a little bit it makes me more frugal despite my best intentions. I know darn well that my brain tends to regard points as sort of free money. So I didn't, I've never really uh, considered that, uh, that point. I find that interesting. You know, I, it's a point in my, in my favor, but the, the fact that you treat cash back as cash dollars and you treat points as some sort of funny money. It's like crypto. It's like something, it, it's like the this sort of fictitious makeup, you know, monopoly money. And um, it actually, in his case, he, he met, he, he spent more when he knew that he had the points. You just, you, if it was more expensive, he's like, I got points. I'll just pay more. I'll just use more points. No problem. I just want to say I've never willingly signed up for a rewards card. Um, I recently had an Uber card get transferred. It, 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 the Uber card got shut down and then it was um, converted into a Barclays view card of some sort. I never used that card. I actually got to look into where, it, where it's at currently. Um, 
I never understood that. Even for me, when I came into the credit card game, I it never enticed me from the jump because I said, okay, I could either go for rewards, which is viable, but I have access to cash back, which I completely understand from the beginning. It's like completely understandable. Five, if, if it's 5% cash back, I know that I'll get 5% of those purchases and I'm going to get that. That's cash money and I can use it for whatever I want. And, you know, I just want to make a little case here. I look at credit cards as like passive income. And I define that as any any money earned in a manner that does not require too much effort. That's the way I define passive income. And when you're using credit cards in a way that makes it a second job, it makes it like a side hustle. It makes it, you know, something that you have to extend more hours, four hours into for what looks like just a, a little bit more value back it doesn't seem enticing you know there there is some more to this discussion i i i wanted to say and maybe you guys can clarify for me that um there there's like three or four different things you have to watch out for and I have to learn more about this myself. When, when you're using your points, you have to watch out for blackout dates. And there was like three or four other things and I, I wasn't even aware of that, you know, in addition to not having access to all the best uh, flight prices, you have to watch out for, you know, the dates that aren't available. That's those are there's a lot of things to keep, you know, a lot of rules and requirements that you have to keep track of. I want to see what you guys are saying. DJ Bruce Wayne, what is up? What's up, my guy? Yeah, Danny, you're saying, Cal, I'm with you, bro. I'm more cash back than points. And Danny, I know you have the, the blue cash preferred, but that is a cash back card. Um, don't you have, you have another Amex card, right? You have like the gold or something. I just, you know, every time they, it looks, it looks appealing at on the surface level to me, but I never, I, there's nothing that pushes me over the hump. When I'm looking at the Amex Platinum, when I'm, I'm looking at the Platinum, I'm like, okay, I, first thing I see is that 695 annual fee and then all these statement credits. And, and then you look at the fine print of each credit and it's like, you can only use it on this day in this particular way. Now there is a case to be made for wanting, uh, you know, wanting to you to basically participate in this hobby on like the highest level. If you, if you get value just from the fact of putting together that puzzle of solving these riddles that they're putting, you know, that they're, uh, that they're posing to you, they're saying, Hey, if you want to earn this rate, you gotta, you gotta use it in this particular way. If you like solving those problems, I had a guy, let me tell you, I had a guy to told me, and I, this really made it clear for me. He loves the feeling of standing in line and trying to figure out exactly which card to use to earn the best value. And now you could use that for a cash back card, but you know, if, if you're using points, just think about how good that feeling would be to, to know that you were able to solve it and you got the maximum reward. You used a little bit of your time and you were able to, you were a savvy credit card user and you put it all together. You did the calculations and you, you travel, you, you three X your, you know, initial, reward that would feel great and if you get value from that then i think those types of cards are for you and i don't you know i don't begrudge you for using those dj 
DJ Bruce Wayne, you're saying rates, it's a game and you have to play it right. Okay. And I'm assuming you're talking about the travel partners and how those, the, the, the rates for the conversion rates, right? And correct me if I'm wrong, they actually change from like month to month or season to season where you'll, it's not a consistent thing. You can't always transfer your points to a, a specific travel partner and get the same conversion rate. That's a whole nother level of strategy there. You know, I find that, just think about this. There's so many average people, like most people already have a credit card and most of them don't even know the basic rewards of the card. They're like, I have this card, like I, it does something. I just don't know exactly where I can use it. It's like a Southwest card. They're like, I don't know where it earns points at. Southwest, right? <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe on travel or something like that. But they, they earn, they know shockingly little about what the card does, Surpri you know, surprisingly. Shockingly, shockingly little. One traveling diva, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. It's good to have you. Okay, uh, I don't know how to say your name, but I'm gonna answer this question for you. The cap one is a, you have the cap one secure card, also $500 limit, my oldest card, uh, for three years, should I close my Quicksilver one? Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna tell you. For most people, closing a card is not going to um, impact their score. It's it's definitely not gonna impact their score immediately, and when it actually does, it's gonna have little effect typically because when you close a credit card, it doesn't affect your score for ten years. So all that, all those good payment data, all that payment data still remains on your file for 10 years when you close it in good standing. And typically, if you already have multiple credit cards, when, when that small of a limit, so if you have like a $2,000, $5,000, $10,000 available credit limit, if you cl close that card and your available credit limit drops off 500, it's such a small portion of your total available limit, it doesn't even make a dent. So I would say if you're unhappy with the service, if the Capital One is giving, I know a lot of people don't like the way they do business, how they bucket cards. That's been a really big issue. I would say go ahead and close it down and just, you know, consolidate your, your cards. Yeah. Um, Traveling Diva, the discussion these, these guys are asking me about the um, this Capital One card, or they're closing it down. I always say, for most people, nine times out of 10, closing the card is gonna be the best way to go. Um, uh, the only time that closing a card will really cr you know, create some havoc with your credit report is if that is your largest credit limit. That's really what's gonna affect your, your credit limit the most, because remember, um, credit utilization is 30% of your score calculation. So you want to be able, you want to keep that credit utilization rate as low as possible. And the way you do that is, is by main, maintaining a very high available credit limit and a low usage rate. Jorge Gonzalez, welcome to the stream. It's good to have you. Yeah, man, let's chop it up. Let's discuss whatever you want. Oh, I'm um, traveling diva. If you want to know, um, just to fill you in, if you just got here, I, um, let me bring this up. What we discussed. I think the big news this week, just to review is going to be the Apple card there. The, if you have an Apple cash card, so basically you have, if you have Apple Pay, you have to have an Apple Cash card. They're going to be moving from the Discover Payment Network to the Visa Payment Network. And the biggest deal with that is that if you go to Costco and shop, you'll be able to use the Apple Cash card there because they only accept Visa um, Visa cards. 
And two, with the Apple credit card, they're adding Ace Hardware as the 3% category. So um, you're going to be able to get 3% cash back at, at this list of places plus Ace Hardware. I want to ask you guys, let me stop this poll here. I want to know if you, what you prefer, do you prefer points or cash back? I have to check in. I got to tap in with this and figure, you know, I know that the, you know, kind of my audience will, will change over time. I mostly talk about cashback and listen, I, I, I'm a firm believer in talking about what you're, what you know, I, I, all I use is cashback cards. So I'm going to have an extreme focus on cashback and I'm going to be biased on cashback. Just, just so you know. I'm heavily biased, all right? I'm, I'm unabashedly biased. Cheryl, what is up? Welcome to the stream. It's good to have you. So um, you guys are saying um, uh, early results are in. Early results, we got 15% for points. That's a little bit less than I uh, expected there. I don't, I don't know what, uh, I would definitely have to do some heavy research to figure out what, um, I can see why there's so much content on points because the landscape is, is changing seemingly from day to day. There's all these little updates, you know, they, they do these, uh, uh, it's such a complex system just on the surface from my point of view, maybe it's easy for some of you guys. Um, Gregory, so what I'm talking about with the, it's the Apple cash card. So it's, it's not the Apple card itself. It's basically that when you set up Apple pay, they should automatically, um, uh, by default, ask you to set up an account with an Apple cash card. And that's basically a debit card. And so the debit card is moving from discover to visa payment network. Yeah. Traveling Divi said, run me my money. Yes. Got to run that money. Run that money up. Absolutely. It's good everywhere. Money, cash money is good everywhere. There's no, hey, um, this is the, you got the wrong day, sir. You know, we, we actually don't take that at, at this moment. Or you, you go and you try to redeem it. And it's actually, it's not worth a dollar. It's worth 80 cents. Who wants to hear that? You know? All right. So we got 85% for cash back. That's great. You guys, uh, listen. I think you guys made the right decision there. Bruce Wayne, you're saying Costco is a wholesale club. Make sure it's acceptable at that percentage. I know all the major players lower the percentage on wholesale clubs. Okay. There's not a, because it's, it's for the debit card. It's for the, the cash card. So you don't, you don't earn a, a percentage on that. Simply Orange Day, welcome to the stream. Um, you're saying, so what does this change mean? Yeah, this, I, I'm not sure like on the back end what that's gonna mean like company wise, but um, just a big change like that is gonna mean that if 
like a, for example a merchant like costco who only accepts visa it's actually you're actually going to be able to use your apple cash card to make purchases there and if there's any other merchants like that that only accept purchases on the visa there's a lot of places that only accept visa and mastercard so you're going to be able to um, use your card there traveling diva you say um i know y'all were talking about bucketing i actually posted this question to one of my groups anybody have experience getting out of a bucket besides getting a new car that is a great question enough people don't ask me that uh, particular question um i've seen reports that people were able to escape the bucket but it's taken an extremely long time i've been seeing like five plus years and then on on the flip side i'm seeing um people you know they might use the card their their capital one card for uh, pretty heavily and then say you know what forget about it i'm just going to set it aside and then they'll get some sort of update uh like a month or so later that they got an increase or just out of the blue they, what what i'm learning is that Capital One strictly uses their algorithm, their computer algorithm to, to do these increases. And there, there's nothing you could say to like a customer service rep that's gonna influence that decision. And it either takes an extremely long time, longer than most people are willing to wait, or it just happens randomly. And I know you don't wanna, that's not a great answer, but that's the only thing I've been able to find. A lot of, um, I, I think I, I got lucky when I came to Capital One. I didn't experience that because I had already, you know, had multiple cars before I applied for the Quicksilver car with Capital One. So out of the gate, I was able to get a $15,000 limit. And um, even last month, I got a $1,000 increase on my Quicksilver car, which I never used, by the way, just to give you a data point. Never use that car. And I was still able to get so obviously I'm in a, in a better bucket, but I started at a, at a different level. A lot of people are coming into Capital One with like poor credit, which I'm realizing, which I think is great that they're offering credit to people that don't have it or they may be in a, in a bad position, but they don't their cars just don't grow with their customers. All right, Simply Orange Jay, you're saying, I'm loving my Apple card. They showed me the most love on my credit line. Yeah, I've been I've been seeing it. I was a little surprised before I looked into how they conduct business. They'll you, you can actually ask for an increase. It's only a soft pull every 31 days. And a lot of people are able to use, you know, a high percentage of their um of their credit limit on a monthly basis, and they're able to get you know, double their, their limit most times. And people are getting up into like the twenties, $20,000 limits now, which is higher, much higher than any card that I have. That's great. You know, what's up? How you doing, man? Welcome back. Okay, Jorge, you're saying um, you got a question. Capital One declined my credit increase. Recent um, use of the account existing credit line has been too low. My credit limit is 9,000 right now. What's your recommendation? How much should I spend now? Yeah, I'm seeing the the percentage that I that I've been seeing is if you spend, you know, closer to you know 50% or more, um, then that kind of triggers that it helps trigger an increase, but it's gotta be over like a prolonged, prolonged period of time. So I would say, you know, try to try to get that around the 50% mark, which is which is tough. Um, I would just say, uh, use, use that card as your primary card for a period of like six months. If, if that doesn't do it, then you might wanna um, put that to the side. So I would just say that, don't use that as your primary card for six months, if that's not effective, 
then you might want to put that aside. It's really hard to, to get an increase with Capital One if you're not in the right bucket from the beginning. Greg, are you saying I have most of my cards with credit unions because you established a relationship to use more of their product options? And so, Greg, are you saying that because you you can use a relationship, it's it's easier and more satisfying to use their credit products instead of you know being uh, having to to spend a lot of money to to get those uh, increases and and gain more trust? If that's what you're saying, that's a that's a great point. And credit unions, I've noticed, I personally don't use credit unions at the moment, but I noticed that Navy Federal, and um, I know that a new one on the scene that I, on my scene has been the Pennsylvania State, um, the net new Pennsylvania card from State Employees Credit Union, I believe. They're, they're going to give you higher credit limit increases. So I know at the, at the moment, Navy Federal is given like $8,000 maximum uh, credit limit increases. And um, you just won't get that with these other consumer credit cards from, you know, City, Discover, and, uh, and Chase. Yeah, Danny, you're saying you love credit unions. Listen. I'm just getting back into the credit unions. I know I got, uh, I was really shocked to get approved for an FMBO. If you guys know the first national bank of Omaha, they, they give you some, they, that's actually a credit union. If you're interested in getting uh, pre-approved with a soft pull and they actually give you the credit limit from the jump. They're one of the few places. I know the Apple card does the same thing. They will give you what your expected credit limit is before they hard pull. So I was able to see I, it was just under ten thousand dollar limit that they were able to that they were willing to give me. I didn't go through with the application, but just so you know. Char, you're saying I've been with a credit union for 15 years and they never approved me. I went Capital One and they approved me for two cards. Wow, that's like a reverse. That's that's like the reverse of so many people's uh, story. Which credit union did you um did did you get denied with? Yeah, Gregory saying Navy Fed and PenFed is great as well. Yeah, but I have a video on PenFed. Yeah, Pen, PenFed looks good. The thing is, you know, uh, the problem Navy Fed is that they don't accept just anybody. You have to have some sort of affiliation with the, uh, the Department of Defense or the military. That's the only thing that's keeping it, that's holding it back. Nino, you're saying cashback is only good if you can redeem to external checking account and no minimum to redeem. Not all cashback cards are created equal. Yeah, very true. Very true. Um, uh, yeah, so if you don't, so for example, the city custom cash and the city uh, double cash card, you can redeem into an external bank. But a lot of the cards like the SoFi card, you're, you, I know you're talking about that one's included. You have to basically commit and say, I'm using this as my personal account and um, that's going to be my primary account. I'm going to get my checks direct deposited there. And that's will you that's when you'll earn the full 2%. So if you're willing to make that, you know, that commitment, then you can reap those benefits in that case. But yeah, very true. And then a lot of ca cashback cards are going to have that foreign transaction fee. So if you travel a lot, that might be an issue for you. Jorge Gonzalez said, what do you think about the Discovery card? Discovery card is a great, you know, beginner starter card. It's great. They, you know, it's a soft pull to get pre-approved. It's it's a great place to start. Um, it's got that 5% rotating categories that you can um, take advantage of. Uh, it's a little bit more 
uh, work than I was willing to do in the beginning because I didn't want to manage those rotating categories. I like having flat rate, you know, consistent cash back and I like it to be automated. That's what I always stress. But um, yeah, I'm very, um, I always recommend Discovery It card. And then they have that first year, they double your, your cash back rate up to $300, I believe. It's good. And they have great customer service. It's actually award-winning customer service. Um, and I think it's second to to Amex in their customer service department. Oh, Shar, you're in New York City? Okay. Yeah, I'm in um uh I'm out here in uh, Long Island. So that's good. Municipal Credit Union, New York City. I, I haven't heard of it. These credit unions are really, um, the, these national credit unions, the large ones, like the, the Navy Feds and the Penn Fed and uh, the PSECU, I think you'll be able to get approved there. If you try, just, you know, I would say try with uh, one of those major uh, credit unions. I think you'll, you'll have some luck with that. DCU. Yeah, Gregory. Good. I actually just signed. I don't. How did I forget about DCU? It's Digital Credit Union. I actually just signed up for DCU. I wanted to get that. Um, it, It's a, an easy $100 I got in, last November where if you direct, I'm sorry, if you set up a, an account and then you made five payments, I'm sorry, five purchases, then they would give you a $100. And so what I did was make five purchases of like a dollar on that account and then i got the hundred bucks so it definitely worked out so i do have a dcu account ellen beck welcome to the stream um so you're using sofa more and more think of like applying for their credit card thoughts on credit limits approval chances the good day and good day to all oh yeah we're kind of, <laughs> yes we're kind of forever so um i like i use that sofi card every day pretty much i've used it for um since it was on pre-release um i've it's my primary it's like my base level card that is uh it's my everyday card i like it you can get pre-approved with a soft pull and um they their minimum credit limit is a thousand dollars i'm i'm pretty sure most people get approved for more than a thousand bucks with that card so i'm i like that one the the, the reason if you already use a sofi account it's kind of a no-brainer because you're able to automate I, like i just got a notification earlier today that told me that my rewards points were moved into my checking account automatically i never had to touch a thing that i don't have to unlock the app or anything every month on the first yep it's may 1st it will automatically redeem those rewards and i'll just have a little bit more money in my checking account it's nice and there's no um foreign transaction fee so i don't have to think about i don't have to be somewhere in another country in mexico and think oh did i bring the right card with me no i always have it with me it's and it's you know i'm always earning two percent back All right, so you're saying I am an international student. I had Discover Card for three months, planning for a second one. Any suggestions? That, you know what? I don't want to give a suggestion. Where do you spend the most money? Where, where were you already interested in? You know, just tell if you tell me a little bit more about yourself. And also, you know what? I should tell you guys, I have a, I set up a Discord channel for the, uh, for this channel. So um, I'll, I'll drop a link that it should be in the description but I'll, I'll drop one in the description by the time the stream's over. You can, um, we can have a private chat about it. If you want to go in deeper, if you want to have a longer discussion and you can join me on my discord. We can, we can even talk on a phone call or something. Uh, Nino, you're saying once you go NFCU, you never go back. Oh, wow.
a lot of people are very enthusiastic about uh, Navy Federal. It's the that's the big one. Once you get a Navy Fed. Yo, <laughs> Jorge, what's up, man? It's been a while. Jorge, how you doing? Good to have you back on the stream, man. Yeah, hope you're having a good week. Good weekend. Cinemanis, man. Welcome back. Have you do you have any more deals? I hope you got some more deals, you know, something I want I want to get, you know, a hundred bucks or fifty bucks for doing nothing. So let me know. Let everybody know in the chat what you got. Yeah, Jorge, uh, for Navy Fed, you do have to be affiliated with um, the military in some way. And the back door is if you have a roommate that lives with you, then you can get in. Now, Navy Fed doesn't really verify a lot of things, but it's not good to you know, try to get in there. And then I don't know who, who, who knows when they might have an audit and they'll say, you know, what, you're not supposed to be, um, have an account with us, but they're pretty liberal with their, um, approvals and what I've seen. All right. So you said, what does pre-approval mean? Because I've heard people getting pre-approval from Chase then getting rejected once they apply. Yeah. So pre-approval is just a, they just look at the soft pull data and it, I'm just going to say this, um, it, greatly improves the odds that you will be accepted but there is a slight chance that you won't there are certain indicators that they look when they look deeper at your credit report when they do this when they do that hard pull and they find you know certain things that weren't in the soft pull data then they can deny you at that point so it is it's a small chance but i've i want i've never had an experience where i've been pre-approved for a car and then gotten denied that car personally and I've, I've even been pre-approved through Credit Karma recently um, in December. I got approved for the City Custom Cash Card. And in the Credit Karma app, it told me you have outstanding chances of getting approved for this card. And I got approved. Oh, hey, you're saying I was thinking about PayPal's latest revamped credit card. Does the 3% global fee apply to international PayPal purchases online or in store? I don't know exactly, Jorge, but uh, I would assume it does. I I'm just assuming that, but I would have to do some investigative work. Um, I have been, surprisingly, I've been using PayPal more now because um, if you have the PayPal MasterCard currently, that new 3% reward is going to be retroactive. It's going to apply to the purchases that you're making now, even though that the reward system isn't fully kind of rolled out right now. So I, it's, it's a little shocking to me how many merchants have PayPal available at, at checkout. And I, I used it to, to order like, you know, some, some prints online. They had a PayPal button and um, I, I can see myself using it a lot coming up. Danny, I know that he, uh, it, pay, just so everybody knows that PayPal uses the Synchrony Bank as its credit card issuer, and they've been having some issues. I know Danny had had a lot of cards, maybe five or six cards, just canceled out of the blue uh, for no apparent reason. And you know, credit card companies, just so you know, they don't have to give you any reason for canceling cards. They can change anything about their uh, awards, their reward system at any time. They have the ability to do that. And they can cancel you. And there's no recourse that you can take. Yeah, Cisco, um, listen, general, my general philosophy on applying for any, um, any account that's going to require you to take some, you know, huge step or action, like a direct deposit is you want to only apply for things that you can see, get value from. Only apply for cars that you can see yourself using long term. That's the I think that's the best strategy to take. So you're saying is the Capital One 360 checking account worth getting it for the 250 bonus? And I would say to that only if you see yourself using that uh, 360 account because I'm pretty sure that it's going to require some sort of direct deposit. 
So if you can see, just like Nino was saying, he uses 360 account for an emergency fund. Then um, if you if you're gonna use it for something like that, like he does, then it could be a good way to go for you. But if it's if it's something that you're if you don't like Capital One or you know you're gonna forget about the account, I wouldn't I wouldn't even go for it. Yeah, Jorge. So you're saying with all the points you just gave out about the PayPal card, does that make applying for the card worth it? You know, I personally haven't, I have a bunch of synchrony, um, bank cards. So uh, the PayPal is, is issued by synchrony bank. Um, I haven't had an issue personally with synchrony. Um, it's still a flat 2% card with 3% cash back wherever you use PayPal. That is, that's a powerful card. And I think that it's in a discussion of being possibly the best flat 2% card on the market, just based on that. So I would say go for it. I would go for it personally, but I'm, I'm into, I'm in the cash back to, to begin with. And then I love having a great, you know, uh, flat rate card. Because the thing about flat rate is you don't have to you don't have to give much thought to it. You, you you're kind of on the surface level. You're getting most you're getting most of the rewards of using a you know uh, a cashback card without the headaches. I ca I consider them headaches of trying to use strategy and trying to you know find out where the best values are on the market. Yeah, just be aware and maybe yeah, I'll have to give some more thought to this. And Danny, you're making a good point. Just be just be careful. Yeah, I would say if if you only have one other card, then maybe you want to hold off. Maybe have have a few cards under your belt might be a good strategy before going for something um, that that has a, a history like Synchrony does. Let me let me find you guys a link to my Discord. If you, anybody wants to, um, if you have any questions, I'll. It'll basically those messages will come to me. It'll be some. It'll be somewhere you can private message me if you want to have some sort of discussion. Um, let me just find the link to my Discord here. So you guys uh, just want to let you know with the poll here, I said, what do you prefer points or cash back? 87%. That's almost 90% of people said they prefer cash back. And it makes sense, right? I'm, all, I'm always bad mouthing cash back. I know you guys, uh, some of you guys hate it. That's a link to my discord. I just dropped. I pinned that message in the chat. You guys, if anybody wants to, I know some people want to have a more of a discussion and email is kind of a little tedious for me, but if you want to um, chat it up, then I'll be there. I'll be, I'll be watching. Darren, what's up, brother? Brother, um, so cash back first as a foundation, then points for recreation. Interesting. Did you just, is that, should I know that saying? That's pretty, uh, that's pretty nice right there. 
Cashback is a foundation that points for recreation. I like it. I might have to steal that from you. Darren, what um what what points what is your favorite points card right now? Hey, Cinemanus, what's up? I did, I saw that you came in the chat. I didn't see any other uh, posts from you. Yeah, um, Jorge, it is issued through, I think it's like Citizens Bank. If you look into the literature, the Apple Cash card, I believe is, I think it's, some, it's being kind of managed by Citizens Bank. Okay, anybody correct me if I'm wrong. Right, guys i'm still working on the next video it's going to be on capital one and um just got to put some some extra input in put some extra touches on that in case anybody's wondering i do these every sunday at 7 p.m so anybody new thank you for joining i really appreciate you hanging out with me i'm gonna leave the chat open but i'm gonna i'm just gonna shut everything down guys have a great night it's good to have you i'll see you next Sunday at 7 p.m. Thank you.